Phallic architecture consciously or unconsciously creates a symbolic representation of the human penis. Buildings intentionally or unintentionally or unintentionally resembling the human penis are a source of amusement to locals and tourists in various places around the world. Deliberate phallic imagery is found in ancient cultures and in the links to ancient cultures found in traditional artifacts. The ancient Greeks and Romans celebrated phallic festivals and built a shrine with an erect phallus to honor Hermes, messenger of the god. Those figures may be related to the ancient Egyptian deity mine, who was depicted holding his erect phallus. Figures of women with a phallus for a head have been found across Greece and Yugoslavia. Phallic symbolism was prevalent in the architectural tradition of ancient Babylon. The Romans, who were deeply superstitious, also often used phallic imagery in their mystic items. The ancient cultures of many parts of the Far East, including Indonesia, India, Korea, and Japan, used the phallus as a symbol of fertility in motifs on their temples and in other areas of everyday life. Scholars of anthropology, sociology, and feminism have alleged a symbolic nature of phallic architecture, especially large skyscrapers, which dominate the landscape, supposedly as symbols of male domination, power, and political authority. Towers and other vertical structures may unintentionally or perhaps subconsciously have those connotations. There are many examples of modern architecture that can be interpreted as phallic, but very few for which the architect has specifically cited or admitted that meaning as an intentional aspect of the design. The worship of the phallus has existed since the Stone Age and was particularly prevalent during the Neolithic period and the Bronze Age. Phallic architecture became prominent in ancient Egypt and Greece, where genitalia and human sexuality received a high degree of attention. The ancient Greeks honored the phallus and celebrated phallic festivals. The Greco-Roman deity Priapus was worshipped as a god of fertility, depicted with a giant phallus in numerous public architectural pieces. The Greeks regularly built a shrine, which they called Herm, at the entrance of major public buildings, homes, and along roads to honor Hermes, messenger of the gods. The shrines typically took the form of a vertical pillar topped by the bearded head of a man, and from the surface of the pillar, below the head, an erect phallus protruded. It is believed that they sought their inspiration from the ancient Egyptians and their phallic image of men, the valley god, who was similarly depicted as a standing bearded king with simplified body, one arm raised, the other hand holding his erect phallus erotus. The ancient Greek Historian documented women carrying large phallic-shaped monuments and ornaments the size of a human body in villages in ancient Dionysia. On the island of Delos, a pillar. On the island of Delos, a pillar supports a colossal phallus, the symbol of Dionysus. Phallus reliefs on buildings on such sites are also believed to have been apotropaic devices to ward off evil. The elaborate use of phallic architecture and sculpture in ancient Greek society can also be seen in sites such as Ni Nicomedia in northern Greece. Archaeologists excavating the ancient town discovered clay sculptures of plump women with phallic heads and folded arms. Similar figurines of women with phallus heads from the Neolithic period have been found across Greece, Macedonia, and parts of old Yugoslavia. The vast majority of the figurines of the Hamangia culture have cylindrical phallus-shaped heads without facial features, although some, particularly of the Aegean culture, had phallic sculptural pieces with phallic heads with phallic heads with a pinched nose and slitty eyes. In these parts of the ancient world, obelisk-like structures resembling the human penis were built, often with phallic symbols representing human fertility and asserting male sexuality and orgasm. Phallic symbolism was prevalent in the architecture of ancient Babylonia and in comedian iconography. The obelisk was considered to be symbolic of the phallus of the phallus of the masculine earth. The obelisks of ancient Egypt themselves had several functions, existing both as a reference to the cultus of the sun and of the phallus, representing fertility and power. Although phallic architecture as individual pieces was not prevalent in ancient Rome as it was in ancient Greece or Egypt, 
The Romans were deeply superstitious and often introduced phallus, related components as architectural pieces and domestic items. Archaeologists unearthing a site in Pompeii discovered many vases, ornaments, and sculptures unearthed, revealing the preoccupation with the phallus, also unearthing an 18-inch terracotta phallus, phallus protruding from what was believed to have been a bakery with the inscription, Ic Habitat Felicitat. Here, Wells Happiness, and many Romans wore phallus amulets to ward off the evil eye. Priapic worship amongst the women of Sicily continued into the 18th century, worshiping phallic votive objects and kissing such offerings before placing them upon the altar in the churches. Fetishism with the phallus architecturally and in smaller implements was also exhibited by certain Gnostic sects in medieval times, such as the Manichaeans, and was connected with Masochism and Sadism, a form of religious flagellantism, a form of religious flagellantism, smaller phallic-shaped monuments in the form of idols, even vases, rings, drinking vessels, and jewelry have been well documented and could be found within medieval churches of Ireland. In Hinduism, the Hindu Trimurthy represents Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. Shiva, the main deity in India, is both destroyer and is stated to also include his role of creation. This creation role is represented by the phallic symbol known as lingam in which form he is worshipped, or in the form of male trinity, a penis, and two testicles. The linga, or phallus, is a common feature of Hindu temples across India, ingrained as reliefs or other forms. The Brihadis were our temple of Tanjur in Tamil Nadu, built during the Kala dynasty, is dedicated to Shiva, and features lingam between the cells. It is especially renowned for its whole of 1,000 lingas in Indonesia. The phallic linga and feminine yoni remain common in symbols of harmony. The Sultan's Palace of Kasapasapan in West Java has a number of linga, yoni carvings along its walls. According to the Indonesian chronicles of the Babad Tanajawi, Prince Bugar gained the kingly power from God by ingesting sperm from the phallus of the already dead Sultan Amankarat II of Mataram Kandisuku Temple of Netaram Kandisuku Temple of Nengansa, East Java, was built in the 10th century and is dedicated to Shiva. The temple has numerous reliefs graphically depicting sexuality and fertility, including several stone depictions of a copulating penis and vulva. It consists of a pyramid with reliefs and statues at the front, among them is a male statue clutching his penis with three tortoises with flattened shells. The temple once had a striking 1.82 meter, 511.5 FD representation of linga with four testicles. This is now housed in the National Museum of Indonesia. Phallic references were also made in Kiyo architecture in Cambodia, and several Khmer temples depict the phallus in reliefs. In Africa, Ancient Malians, particularly the royals of Dijeni, decorated their palaces with phallus-like piers and columns at the entrance of their palaces and decorated the walls with phallus motifs. Similar features can be seen on the pillars of many temples across Africa, often interpreted by Western scholars to be phallic symbols, but may often be more subtle and subject to varying interpretation. Like the ancient Egyptian pharaohs, Aksumanite kings built temples with phallic pillars in ancient Ethiopian cities, such as Khonsu, and monolithic pillars with phallic representation have also been discovered in Madagascar. In ancient Maya, phallic architecture was rare, but Uxmal in particular has a considerable number of phallus, like architectural pieces. It contains a temple known as the Temple of the Phallus and Phallic Sculptures and Motif. Cobb Nicholas Ledeau was a major exponent of architectural development in the 17th century, which articulated across the tensions of form and ornament, symbol and allegory, dogma and fantasy, at a time when Western society was oppressive and particularly sensitive to public displays of sexuality. Blatant and graphic phallic architecture would have been considered an embarrassment and a shameful act. In his initial draft for the House of Pleasure in Cho, a proposed ideal city near the Forest of Cho, 
Ledo drew upon allegorical ideas in his design with the union of man and woman, a physiological interpretation of intercourse and penetration of intercourse and penetration. Private bedrooms were designed to thrust out from the circular ring of the building, metaphorically representing penetration, the circular ring representing the vaginal passage and womb of the female. The second revised design is said to subliminate both elevated sight and female gender with a lonely phallus without the original planned animated circular ring representing the female reproductive organs. Ledo drew upon phallic and sexually charged inspiration in other buildings which he designed of Beeson Khan Theater, for instance, was fueled by the exigencies of prostitution and ancient sexual ritual. However, in comparison to the likes of Jean-Jacques Lacou, who gained notoriety for his pornographic architectural concoctions, Ledo's architectural concoctions, Ledo's architectural inspiration was relatively mild, and he is said to have omitted towers from his designs on occasion as he was aware that they would be frowned upon shamefully by general society as a too obvious representation of the phallus. Ledo's missing erection is explained to this effect in Jacques Lican's significance of the missing phallus, according to Oscar Ryutivard. The interest in neoclassical architecture in the 18th century was synonymous with and motivated by a similar interest in masculine virility. Works such as Francesco Colonna's Hypnorata Machia Polifili, 1467, and Giovanni Battista Piranesi's Campo Marzio, 1762, show profoundly the ancient influence of phallic architecture in design and, and contain numerous illustrations of priapic temples and architecture. Piranesi, in particular, is said to have offered a prototype for the mysterious architecture of phallic worship that more closely resembles the houses of pleasure in his etchings. He located two designs for the bustum Caesarid. Augusti, concluding that they were based upon sexual ritual with two phallic plans penetrating the semicircular cubicula. Piranesi believed that the purpose of the phallic designs were to celebrate virility and male regenerative power. Other commentators, such as Carl August Er Hensvard, also provided illustrations and analysis of priapic temples and the meaning of phallic architecture. A work of note to this effect is Neoclassical Temple of Virility and the Buildings with a Phallic Shape Plan, 1977, of the Institute for Art History of the University of Lund, Sweden in America, especially in Chicago and New York and numerous other global cities, high-rise skyscrapers of phallic shape grew up in the 20th century. Le Corbusier, the famous architect, propagated it in Europe in place of traditional decorative architecture. Similar futuristic developments took place in Italy with the initiative of Santillaia symbolizing the triumph of man. Yet, unlike those of ancient times which were blatant architectural representations of the phallus, in the West and modern times, shrines to the phallus are more subtle and may often be subject to interpretation as such. Very few architects have specifically admitted the human phallus as a source for their architectural creation. The Italian fascists were cited as having an obsession with phallic architecture, which was rigid and impermeable. In the last few decades, the high-rise phallic skyscraper has been a symbol of government quest for economic power in China, Hong Kong, and South Korea, and the other ASAM and Pacific Rim nations. China fuels billions of dollars annually into high-rise office and residential buildings with the aim of increasing GDP at a rate far greater than they can be occupied. In art and architecture, acutely vertical buildings are often seen as a symbol of masculinity and horizontal buildings are seen as more feminine. The terms phallic verticality, phallic erectility, and phallic brutality and phallic brutality have been referred to by architectural theorists, including the likes of French sociologist Henri Lefebvre, who argued that buildings of phallic architectural type metaphorically symbolize force, male fertility, masculine violence. Phallic erectility bestows a special status on the perpendicular, proclaiming phallocracy as the orientation of space, while phallic brutality does not remain abstract, for it is the brutality of political power 
Lefebvre conducted considerable research into the meaning of high-rise buildings. He said the arrogant verticality of skyscrapers, and especially of public and state buildings, introduces a phallic, or more precisely a phallocratic element into the visual realm. The purpose of this display, of this need to impress, is to convey an impression of authority to each spectator. Verticality and great height have ever been the spatial expression of potentially violent power. Sigmund Freud metaphorically drew a comparison between high achievement and the acquisition of wealth as building monuments to our penises. In the 19th century, Thomas Michael argues that surrealists capitalized on the phallic symbolism of monuments, such as the ancient Egyptian obelisk from Luxor. In the Place de la Concorde or the Vendôme column, by supplementing these phallic structures with female counterparts, Jules Breton, for example, suggested moving the obelisk to La Villette de Batois and designing a large gloved hand of a woman holding the obelisk in a suggestive manner and adapting the Vendôme into a factory chimney with a nude woman climbing it, Auguste de Bartholdi's 1870 monument defense of Paris. For instance, a commemoration of Leon Gambetta's escape from Paris in balloon during the Franco-Prussian War was also subject to debate amongst Parisian artists of the late 19th century, as they believed it resembled a testicle. Arthur Harfo proposed turning the monument into an enormous sex, the balloon forming a testicle and the phallus being horizontal, while Breton proposed turning it into copulating genitals, adding a twin balloon to form two testicles. Contemporary scholars in architectural criticism have investigated the relationship between architecture and the body, sexuality, sex, power, and place. Feminists in particular, such as Margaret Kennedy, perceive high-rise phallets, like buildings on the urban landscape as phallic symbols of male domination, power, and rational instrumentality. Esther Mee, K. Chung believes the form of monumental high-rise building, which grew up in 20th century America, can be read as a phallic symbol of power. The present trend symbolizes science and technology over nature, incorporating all the maleness which that with sci-fi utopia. Elizabeth Gross, however, offers a counter-argument to phallocentrism in urban design theories, saying not so much the dominance of the phallus as the pervasive unacknowledged use of the male or masculine to represent the human. The problem, then, is not so much to eliminate as to reveal the masculinity inherent in the notion of the universal, the generic human, or the unspecified subject. Mark C. Taylor discusses phallic architecture and what makes a building masculine or feminine in his book, Disfiguring, Art, Architecture, Religion. During the modern era, many sculptors have created some public phallic works of art with varying degrees of subtlety. One of these examples may be the statue in honor to the Carnation Revolution on the top of a hill in Lisbon, Portugal, by the sculptor Joa Cuchilau. Perhaps the greatest example of a phallic cemetery is the Khalid Nabi Cemetery in hills of northeastern Iran, near the border with Turkmenistan, roughly 40 miles, 64 kem, northeast of Gombad Kevu. According to a popular belief, the cemetery housed the tomb of a pre-Islamic prophet, Khalid Nabi, who was born 40 years prior to the birth of Muhammad in C530, the ancient graveyard contains some 600 tombstones of unknown origin, many of which are clear representations of the phallus. From a distance, they resemble stone pegs. Phallic shrines are common in Far East Asia, especially in Buddhist parts of Korea and Japan, where they are seen as symbols of fertility or prowess. In Dragon Pool Temple in Jeju City, there is a phallic shrine which is visited by female pilgrims who come to worship it for its perceived fertility blessing. The phallic stone is made from granite quite small in size and white and was reportedly found in a field nearby by a farmer. In Thailand, the phallus is also considered to be a symbol of good luck and representative of fertility. There are numerous shrines in the country featuring phallic architecture. Taome Tuptim Shrine in Bangkok has over a hundred colored circumcised wooden penis statues of all shapes and sizes which are said to possess special cosmic powers and endow good fortune and fertility on anybody coming into contact with them. 
Hakoran rock located in the Vorkhangia province of Mongolia is a massive statue of a penis raised on a platform on the steppe near Erdin Zoo Monastery. The statue has dual functions. Primarily, it is a reminder to the monks to remain celibate, but it is also a symbol of fertility and human life. A smaller statue of a phallus is nearer the monastery. Hazendang Park, also known as Penis Park, in Gangwon Province of South Korea, located about 20 kilometers, 12 miles, south of Samshek, is a nature park which contains a number of erect statues. A tragic legend shrouds them in that a virgin was once swept out to sea and drowned, unable to be saved by her lover. The townspeople were devastated and helpless, and a curse appeared to have been cast over them, ruining the local fishing industry. One day, a local fisherman relieved himself in the sea, and miraculously, the fishing industry revived. He discovered that her restless spirit could be appeased in such a manner. So the townsfolk compensated for the woman's inability to consummate beyond the grave by placing sexually potent phallic statues in view of the shore. The statues range in size and styles. Some have faces on them and are more animated in appearance and more colorful, but others are exact depictions of the human penis. In some Asian countries, such as Bhutan, many have a belief that a phallus brings good luck and drives away evil spirits. Phallus symbols are routinely painted outside walls of the new houses and carved wooden phalluses are hung, sometimes crossed by a design of sword or dagger. Outside, on the eaves of the new homes, at the four corners, on a road drive from Paro Airport to Thimphu, explicit paintings of phalluses are a common sight on the white washed walls of homes, shops, and eateries. In the Chimi Lakang Monastery, the shrine dedicated to Drapka Kinli, several wooden penises are used to bless people who visit the monastery on pilgrimage seeking blessings to bear a child or for welfare of their children. The glaringly displayed phallus in the monastery is a brown wooden piece with a silver handle, a religious relic considered to possess divine powers and hence used for blessing the spiritually oriented people. It is also said to prevent quarrels among family members in the houses which are painted with these symbols. The 102-story Empire State Building is a New York City designated landmark, one of the city's most famous sites, and is generally thought of as an American cultural icon. Cited by Valerie Brigginshaw as a symbol of American pride and the ultimate sign of American phallic power, it was inaugurated on 1 May 1931. Designed in the Art Deco style, it has a roof height of 1250 feet 380 meters, and with its antenna spire included, it stands a total of 1454, 404 feet 54 foot, 100 high. It stood as the world's tallest building for 40 years, from its completion in 1931 until construction of the World Trade Center's North Tower was completed in 1972. After the World Trade Center was destroyed on September 11, 2001, it remained the tallest building in New York City for 13 years until the One World Trade Center was completed. Numerous people have mentioned its similarities in appearance to the phallus, with its tall and glinting towers. The Leaning Tower of Pisa in Pisa, Italy, dating from around 1173, has long suffered from structural problems. The tower is eight stories high at 55.86 meters, 183.3.3 feet, and before restoration work from 1990, leaned 5.5 degree. It currently leans about four degrees, but due to foundation problems, it continues to sink about one m annually. The resemblance of the tower to a penis has seen the leaning tower of Pisa become a sexual slang term for a half erect penis. Nelson's Column, a monument to Admiral Horatio Nelson, was erected by a grateful nation between 1840 and 1843 to commemorate Nelson's victory at the Battle of Trafalgar. However, the Nelson Memorial Committee ran out of money, having only raised $20,485 in public subscription. The column is Corinthian with a granite shaft. In his poem, A Ballad of the Good Lord Nelson, Lawrence Durrell, 
included the multiply elusive lines, now stiff on a pillar with a phallic Air Nelson stylites in Trafalgar Square, binds the British what once they were. Colonna Mediterranea is a monumental column in Luca Malta. It has been described by its artist Paul Bella Critian as an Egyptian symbol. However, at a glance, it could be observed to look similar to a large penile, and therefore was largely described to be a phallic monument. The monument has managed to attract several international media coverage in specific before and during the visit of Pope Benedict XVI to Malta as the Pope Mobile, carrying the papacy, had been planned and passed by it. Similarly, the same artist has created another monumental column, the Colonna Eterna, which was also described as being phallic by critics. The obelisk of Luxor, which stands in the Place de la Concorde of Paris, France, was given to the French by the Egyptians in the 1800s. The 23-meter, 75-foot obelisk originally stood at the front of Luxor Temple, honoring Ramses II, pharaoh of the 19th dynasty of Egypt. According to Michael D. Garval, the French perceived the obelisk as prodigiously phallic from the moment it arrived. The Oriental Pearl TV Tower, located in Lujiazui, Pudong District, Shanghai, China, is the world's third tallest TV and radio tower at 468 meters, 1535, F2, the tallest such building in Asia. The tower houses, restaurants, theaters, a conference hall, and a hotel and is a significant tourist attraction in the city. The tower has been met a mixed reception, however. The New York Times described it as a great phallic monster of truly monumental ugliness, a bit like an enormous asparagus with a silver ball on top. The long steel column tower is considered by some to be proof of the city's phallic worship and that such skyscrapers indicative of wealth are an increasing aphrodisiac of the materialist in Chinese cities. The Doha Tower, formerly called the Burj Doha or Burj Qatar, was designed by French architect Jean Nouveau. In 2004, the project was first called the High Rise Office Building, following completion in 2012. It was originally called the Burj Doha by its owner, and Sheikh Salad bin Mohammed Al Thani. The public has noted the building's phallic form, suggestive of what Novo calls a fully assumed virility. The state capitol building of Lincoln, Nebraska, has been cited as the apex of phallic architecture at 15 stories and 400 feet, 120 m. Tall, it is the second tallest U.S. State House, surpassed only by the 34-story Louisiana State Capitol, is the tallest building in Lincoln, the third, tallest in the state, and also the heaviest Capitol building in North America. The building was designed by Bertram Grossman or Goodhue, who drew upon classical and Gothic architectural tradition. It was constructed between 1922 and 1932 of Indiana limestone with a golden dome. The building is nicknamed the Phallus of the Plains for its phallus-like appearance. Thirties Nary Axe opened in London in April 2004. Designed by Norman Foster, the 180 meters, 590 feft structure, London's first environmentally sustainable tall building using recycled and recyclable materials has been compared to the phallus in a gherkin, which also is a slang term for small penis. Its nicknames include gherkin, the erotic, gherkin, towering innuendo, and the crystal phallus. Also likened to a phallic fat cigar, the building has been cited as a crude anatomical metaphor, yet has become one of the London's most iconic buildings. Cabinet voted it the best uncircumcised building in the world. The Torah Bar is a 38-story skyscraper located in the Poca de les Glories, Catalanese of the Pablo Nu neighborhood of Barcelona, Spain. Designed by Jean Nouveau, it is named after its owners, the Agbar Group, a holding company whose interests include the Barcelona Water Company, Eggs to Barcelona. An example of high-tech architecture in the city, its design combines a number of different architectural concepts, resulting in a striking structure built with reinforced concrete covered with a facade of glass 
an over 4,500 window openings cut out of the structural concrete, the building stands out on the skyline of Barcelona. It is the third tallest building in the city, standing at 144 or M473.9 eft, with an area of over 50,000 square meters, of which 30,000 are offices. 2,500 LED bulbs caused the tower to change color at night. It was officially opened by the King of Spain on 16 September 2005. Novo claims it to be inspired by a geyser and the nearby mountain of Montserrat, although he does note its phallic appearance. Although many draw comparisons with the phallus, locals refer to the structure as El Suppositorio, the Suppositorio, a drug delivery system that is inserted into the rectum or vagina. The Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. is often seen as a prime example of phallic architecture and American masculinity. The towering monument made of marble, granite, and bluestone genies. It is both the world's tallest stone structure and the world's tallest obelisk, standing 555 feet, 5 feet, 5 feet, 5 feet, 8 in Chech, 160, 9.294 m. According to the National Park Service, construction of the monument began in 1848, was halted from 1854 to 1877, and was completed in 1884. In a journal review dated 17 October 1911, Arnold Bennett said of the monument, so Washington Monument. Follic, appall it, appall it, a national catastrophe only equaled by the Albert Memorial. Tiny doll-like people waiting to go into it. Dan Burstein says of it, speaking of sex symbols, there is no more phallic symbol in existence than the Washington Monument, and the Capitol Dome can be viewed as breast-like. James Webb used a metaphor to praise the uplifting power of the Washington Monument as a white phallus piercing the air like a bayonet. In the futuristic film Hardwired, set in the United States where everything noteworthy is commercialized, the Washington Monument is used as a giant Trojan condoms billboard. Ypsilanti Water Tower is a historic water tower in Ypsilanti, Michigan, United States, listed as a National Register of Historic Places building in 1981. The tower was designed by William R. Coates and constructed as part of an elaborate city waterworks project that began in 1889. Located on the highest point in Ypsilanti, the tower was completed in 1890 at a cost of $21,435.63 Today, the tower is frequently joked about for its phallic shape and has earned the nickname Brick Dick. It has become a well-known landmark in Ypsilanti, and due to the building shape and location, the tower is frequently used by residents as a point for providing directions for visitors and residents. Iggy Pop said of it in a 1996 interview, the most famous thing in Ypsilanti is this water tower made out of brick, about 175 years old. It looks like this big penis, the world's most phallic building contest, was a contest held in 2003 by Cabinet Magazine to find the building which most resembled a human phallus. The contest originated when writer Jonathan Ames drew the ire of Slate readers by claiming in a diary that was later published in his book, I Love You More Than You Know, that the William Byrd Bank building in Brooklyn, New York City, New York City, New York, was the world's most phallic. This led Cabinet Magazine to initiate a search of its own to find which building was truly the world's most phallic. Cities and readers subsequently poured in their views and staked their claims to the magazine's editors. After months of entries and discussion, the Ypsilanti Water Tower was announced as the winner, although the winner of a reader's poll was the Florida State Capitol Building in Tallahassee. Another notable nominee was the Tor Abbar of Barcelona. The Christian Science Dixon Church in Dixon, Illinois, strongly resembles a penis when viewed from the air. The church, however, claims it was tastefully designed around an old oak tree and declared that we didn't design it to be seen as what they're seeing, and we didn't design it to be seen from above. In 2012, 
a beehive metal sculpture by Thompson Dagnall in Hyde, Greater Manchester, was criticized by the council for its phallic appearance, having been installed adjacent to the children's play area in Hyde Park. Although Dagnall was paid 3,500 a week for his efforts, council workers modified the structure by stumping it and moved it to another part of the park. A new headquarters for the People's Daily Newspaper has been under construction since 2013 and is slated for completion in 2014. In May 2013, China attempted to censor jokes about its phallic shape. The 22-meter 72F High Hyde Park Obelisk, located in Hyde Park, Sydney, Australia, at the intersection of Elizabeth Street and Bathurst Street, is both a former sewer vent shaft and a notable landmark in the Sydney TV. Its phallic appearance was emphasized on 7 November 2014, when the AIDS Council of NISWA AON temporarily installed a giant condom over the obelisk as part of a HIV. The installation generated a lot of media interest, including many phallic innuendos, and drew the ire of the Australian Christian lobby.